Good uh, evening, everybody. Welcome to the studio this evening. Let's zoom in a little bit so that at least this looks, uh, you can see some of what's going on. And adjust the camera a little bit. I may be a bit close, but we can see how it goes. Right, let me move some other things out of the way, at least for the moment. <coughs> right, you'll have to excuse me. Uh, I'll keep clearing my throat and I'll uh, work coughing so if the, if the mic suddenly goes quiet I'm just uh, uh, probably just coughing uh, whilst I recover. Right, uh, I want the flat chisel. I do some work on this foot. Not too bad. That's me. If I do that, I'm going to change some glasses. It will enable me to see a little bit better. <coughs> okay. What I need to do is shave this uh, shape of this foot. A little bit more um, in keeping with the other one. Then we'll do some shaping on the mountain and then we move on to the head. Which we may or may not get to this evening but we'll see how it goes. to do is get the a similar shape to the foot that I've got here on this side and so it's kind of like an arch in the foot and then there's a the toes on the end Trying to round this off here, but it's a little bit awkward just because of the angle of the grain of the wood. It just happens to go in the wrong, <coughs> wrong direction at the wrong time. Fall guy, good evening. Oh dear. You know what, Eddie? <clears throat> As I was starting the stream and I checked the preview, um, I thought I must change that. Oh dear. So thank you for reminding me again. <laughs> Dear. I'll get it right one of these times. Yes, I was doing some chain mail this afternoon. 
I was uh, I I just putting together another two in two. Uh, but I ran out of rings, so it's it's a partially completed chain. And I actually tried doing some um, full Persian. Little little piece of full Persian. Just to see if I could do it. And uh, kind of surprised myself by finding that I could. It took a little bit of a trick to... Um, to work out how to actually get the um, the second green ring in um, because of the tight space, but uh, once I got the trick of it, it was uh, it was quite easy, ish. <laughs> so there you go. So I didn't didn't make a great deal. It was uh, I'd say just that one uh, the 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 one main chain which took about twenty minutes and then the rest of the time was about an hour and a half in total, uh, trying to make that little short length. I mean it's it's the wrong size rings basically, but you know what? Uh, it worked. I was rather surprised, but it actually worked. So I'll have to try some of the half Persian ones next, just to uh, just to see how they go. Uh, I've got a reference picture. Oh, sorry, around here somewhere. There we go. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought it looked like. So I'll use a V gouge because that'll give me the crease I'm after. Oh, I don't know about getting good, but I'm improving. That's definitely yeah, definitely the case. I could just keep on trying new things. My wife has proven once again that her skin, uh, her skin oils or whatever, do not like um, gold plate. Um, I made, um, I made, I, I made a small, well, a small, a reasonably large chain. Added some gold plate rings that she liked the colour of, as I mentioned yesterday. And uh, she's actually she actually worn it all all night and all uh, all day and um, by about two o'clock this afternoon um, she was getting uh, tarnish rubbing off on her skin so her skin was starting to go go a little bit uh, dark black and um, the uh, the gold plate itself was starting to look a bit dark so. That's what the uh, the rose is for to replace. Sorry, the, I say rose. The um, the pink is to replace the gold one. And this time we'll actually try some um, filled gold <laughs> findings and see if uh, see if you think they actually actually keep the gold on the on the uh, on the. On the jewellery, not on not on her skin. Yes, I created a little V here, um, so you can see what we saw the skin fold along the leg, and then what I'm going to do is just. I guess in a little way, sort of subtly, just lower this a little bit because it's further into the background than the, the lower or the thigh, lower thigh, mm, chin, whatever you want to call it. So I don't want it much, but just a little enough to sort of go, you know, to fool your eyes a little bit. No, 
Let's um, and then of course she keeps um, what she does then is point to a ring which is is a gold plated ring. And it may have well been thick gold plated, I don't know, which she's had for um, several months, and which is just losing its gold plate now. But um, she keeps telling me it's almost uh, as though it's my fault that um, the gold plate is coming off. So the next time she wants that particular colour, it's going to have to be filled gold, uh, filled gold rings, which is going to be an interesting price, to say the least. That I did not mean to do. I accidentally just scratched the wood, so I shall have to shave that off. So how's your weekend been, uh, Eddie Fall Guy? You were uh, potentially going to be repairing steps, I believe, this afternoon. You know what, that foot is still too thick. Uh, let's curve it up a little bit and thin it down. And it's unfortunate at this point the wood grain is exactly parallel there which means I've got to cut into it from both sides the problem of cutting into it from both sides is trying to get the same cut to match <laughs> both edges without creating a, a lip which of course is, is um, not the easiest of things to do There's certain things I can I can do to get rid of it if if you know if I can't actually uh, manage it, but I can I can sort of just scrape the uh, scrape the piece a little bit with the uh, with a chisel. Which will remove that slight uh, lip between carving it from one side and carving it from the other. Don't normally like using the uh, using chisels as as uh, draw knives like this, but sometimes it's potentially the only option. If you're using it like a draw knife like this, you actually tend to burr over the edge, just like when you're uh, um, uh, sharpening it, and uh, which of course is effectively blunting the edge of the knife uh, of the edge of the uh, blade. So what I'll probably do in a moment is actually sharpen this blade again. One thing about using it like, a bit like a draw knife like this is it's less sensitive to the um, grain of the wood.
will still, if you're still going to, uh, in the wrong way, it'll still tend to lift the grain out and make it rough, but not as rough as trying to actually carve it at, on the wrong angle. I quite like the bottom of that foot, so let's see if I can thin the top down now to match. Hey, that wasn't bad, uh, a bad afternoon then, <coughs> ending up in the pub. Or was it outside in the, uh, in the beer garden? Of course, I've no idea what your local pub is like, so... There may be no such concept there as a beer garden, but... Uh, I imagine pubs that had them today were doing in, uh, a decent business. There's one near me which um, has doesn't have a beer garden. It basically has a courtyard, and that courtyard is out the front of the uh, pub, and it's right against the road. But it's uh, on days like today, it's it's usually absolutely crammed, packed with people sat everywhere and stood everywhere. You wouldn't, wouldn't know you get that many people into a pub. Well, I suppose, strictly speaking, you didn't, but you know what I mean. It's a funny little weekend today, it's still, um, oh, okay, it's a funny sort of weekend, it seems to be really quiet all around. Um, this morning we dropped it back into Hobbycraft again to, uh, actually to swap out some boxes, uh, storage boxes, but, um, on the, um, on the retail park where it is there was sort of you know fairly late on close to lunchtime there was sort of loads of car parking spaces which is highly unusual for that retail park most of the time you can't you know you you, you queued up waiting for people who were queuing up waiting for people for um for car park spaces and there's usually one or two arguments going on because of that and um said no absolute problem this morning and twitch has been really quiet as well I mean, if we we're just talking about uh, twitch being used in the uk i'd be going oh yeah everybody was out in the sun but it's an international platform so i can't really claim that but it's been a really quiet weekend The wife has been clear, well, has been mentioning some international football matches on, or some fairly important ones, I understand. But and she was uh, she was saying it's probably due to that, but somehow it doesn't strike me as uh, as the reason. That foot's not bad, but I want. I want the toes to be very fine. Let me just temporarily switch to a round gouge.
that will let me set a set a size for the towers and then I want to just thin the the foot itself now in line with what I've just done. There we go. Let's see if I can actually round this off. I think I'm reasonably happy with the shape of this foot now. Sorry, I guess my hand's a little bit in the way, <coughs> which maybe <coughs> maybe make it a little bit difficult for you to see. Actually, it makes it a little bit difficult for me to see, but um, I've got the advantage I can move. Okay, that foot looks okay to me around there. Let's just tidy up this lower leg a little bit. Yeah, I should sharpen this knife. I've been just blunted it. Let's sharpen it again. Sorry about that if you were in the headset. Okay. Yeah, then that should allow me. A yeah, that's a lot better now. Kind of like the difference between using a scalpel and using a spoon. Of course, if you're trying to eat fruit, then <laughs> the choice may be somewhat different. But Just on, on this right hand side here, this this lower leg, I've got a 
uh, like a stop cut mark. Joe, just trying to ease away. Now, one of these days, I will remember to get a big paintbrush out. Then I can use it for just brushing debris away from where I'm working. Yeah, I've still got some awkward cuts just underneath, just on the side here. Don't want to lose too much of this big thick knee. It kind of looks right to me, so. But just on this side, I've got some sort of. I could put it as badly textured wood. <laughs> uh, it's got some cuts in it that I would prefer weren't there. And the only way I can get rid of them is to, to shave what's around down below that um, that particular depth. What's also doing is it's reshaping this lower leg a little bit as I do that, which means that I'm going to have to uh, just compensate for that shape change where necessary in other parts of the leg. That's it. I think we've almost got rid of the bad, badly cut wood on this side. Which is what I was after doing, at least. At least that will be close enough. Now that knee now doesn't look right, so... We'll lose a little bit of the thickness of it. That thickness looks a lot better, so we'll round the leg off. corner of the knee off at the same time. There we go, that looks a lot better to me now than it did. Um, Yeah, 
his ankle just seems to be a little bit off, a little bit, I don't know, heavy. Not quite as round as I want. That'll do. We'll leave it like that for the moment. We can always come back to it afterwards. <clears throat> Right, <clears throat> time for some more on the tail before we work more on the mountain itself. So I'm just going to shape it down a little bit more <coughs> in order to match the shape underneath of the mountain side it's wrapped around. As I mentioned um, in a previous dream, I think I probably want to try and get the tail to sort of come around and tip up a little bit. Just for an interest sake. Now that tip of may actually turn out just to be a case of making it go horizontal, you know, level with the back, rather than physically tip up, but we shall see. At least that's what I'm thinking at the moment. <clears throat> and since he's going sort of quite a, a strong downward angle, just le <coughs> leveling it out would very much make it look like it had tipped anyway so there may be no need for the additional complication of trying to uh, carve it upwards And as usual, I'm making a mess all over the floor. Which I'll have to clean up after the stream. All these people that think when you finish a stream, you just turn off the stream and that's it done. <laughs> It only takes me about 10 minutes after I turn off the stream before I've actually got everything sorted and cleaned up after doing carving. These little shavings tend to get everywhere. Whilst we're not likely to be anywhere near finishing this in the immediate future, they, uh, it's probably about time to start thinking about what the next thing will be. Um, and by thing I mean um, art subject. And uh, it'll probably be, almost certainly be pyrography next, I think. I think that's the next one in the sequence anyway. Now, I've already had a couple of suggestions for what to do. Uh, one, <laughs> one was do an elephant. 
and one was do a uh, portrait of baby tears and anybody that says what's the difference I might just ban you <laughs> so don't but uh, I'm not sure about quite what to uh, what to do yet so if anybody uh, has any good ideas then by all means uh, let me know Chromography can be an odd uh, an odd thing um, it's a monochrome art form so the picture has to look good in black and white basically before it can uh, uh, be, before it can be rendered in uh, the sort of sepia tones that you get from uh, pyrography but it's actually amazing how many scenes that look good in colour if you try and look at them in black and white don't actually look anything like the same so sometimes you'll pick up a pick up a, a, an image of something that's in beautiful colour and it'll look absolutely wonderful and if you try and do it in pyrography it just looks like one big brown mush that's mainly down to the fact that some colours when they um, when they're looked at in, in grayscale are almost identical to each other and uh, therefore you lose you lose that detail from your image because the two colours combine into a single shade and uh, and you lose sort of any distinguishing uh, marks between them Right, well I think that tail I think that's about okay so I'm quite deciding whether to shape it around or, to, or quite how to shape it at the moment um, so in my usual way of procrastinating I won't think about it just now what I'll do is I'll move on to doing a little bit of shaping of the rock You know, rather than mess about with this, I'm trying to use the paint, little tiny paintbrush. I'm going to get the big gun out. Now, if you're wearing a headset, I suggest you take it off or mute your headset for a moment. And I'll give you a couple of seconds because this is a vacuum cleaner. And it ain't quiet. Okay, here goes. That was a bit easier than using the, uh... it's safe now, <laughs> that's a bit easier than uh, than trying to do it with uh, the little tiny paintbrush. Uh, now then, so we've got, time to effectively have a sort of a bit of fun really, that's a U-shaped gouge, that means that's the V-shaped gouge, yep. So all we're going to really do now is just sort of distress this uh, the surface here around uh, here. Uh, you know, make lines and cuts and whatever we happen to feel like. Um, Just to create some sort of texture for the uh, for the mountain. Nothing regular, of course. The mountains aren't. We've got to be quite uh, random about it, which is extremely difficult to do. People are just not very good at uh, doing things randomly.
That's right. I'm going to clear some space behind this foot as well. But again, it's rock, so not bothered about it being too neat. Kind of nice just to go wild with a chisel. I won't say I'm going exactly wild, but you get the idea. I don't have to uh, to to worry too much about uh, where the chisel is uh, is going. I just want uh, some texture around the back here. And if I'm left with sort of rough. Uh, rough bits of wood again that doesn't matter You know what? <laughs> that thought never occurred to me. <laughs> oh dear. It shows what a good pickup the microphone has. It didn't actually sound as loud to me, but I never actually thought of muting the microphone. <laughs> oh dear. My apologies, everybody. Such an obvious solution. Such an obvious solution that I never thought about. At least I did warn you though. I'll be using it again shortly, so I will implement your suggestion at that uh, that time, Eddie Fall Guy. Actually, that's a bit of a mm, uh, well, it's a bit a uh, square edge. So let's um, let's get this take the square edge off.
Okay, that looks a bit better. Let's do it just along this side here as well. Advice is always welcome. I don't mind advice and tips and tricks. Now, this is one set of um, chiseling I wouldn't be doing towards myself. You can see I'm being um, somewhat lackadaisical about it. I am. Uh, doing it on purpose to, to implement a certain lack of control of the chisel so it tends to go where it wants to go within certain constraints. I want it to uh, you know, not to be too controlled in terms of getting down and just ex I'm trying to be random is what I'm trying to say. Might not have been saying it very well, but that was the uh, the intent. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of one of the uh, one of the sayings I used to uh, used to have a long time ago, and people used to say all intents and purposes. Um, I used to say to all those intents, caravans, and the odd dolphin. Um, but anyway, <laughs> totally random thought there. Yeah, this direction has to be somewhat more controlled and pointing it at me. <laughs> Lost in house. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the studio and evening to everybody. Ice cream, waffles and jam. Mm. Yep, that's right. Trying to be purposely uh, control to have a controlled, uncontrolled, uh, purposeful, random movement. <laughs> 
And if that made sense, you can explain it to me. <laughs> So have you been enjoying the weekend as well, uh, Lost? I know you're streaming during the week because I saw you uh, you go live a few times, but uh, unfortunately I was. Uh, Mainly working, and so I couldn't really, uh, couldn't really listen in. Surprisingly, when I listen to music, I tend to need to concentrate more than uh, listening to other things. But I can usually have a television or something similar on when I'm when I'm at work. But put music on, and I end up listening to it and forgetting to work. So. It's not really a good idea most of the time. A little V gouge tool like this is great when you're trying to do um, fur or or similar. On an animal because you can create these little fine uh, lines uh, of course what I'm trying here is some sort of rock texture so I don't want it to end up looking too much like fur Right, let's see what that looks like. I shall mute the microphone this time. Not only that, I'll remember to unmute it afterwards. So let's now just get rid of some of these uh, little stragglers that are... Adhering to the wood. So that's not looking too bad there. Um, It's not great for showing it, but I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see it's kind of now all all around here. It's all now roughly textured. It looks a lot smoother on the on the autofocus for once. Yeah, I think it did. But you can see it's now sort of all rough textured. So you got it looks kind of more mountain-like than it uh, it looked before when it was. Um, was just flat pieces of wood. So I'm quite pleased about that. I've got a bit of work to do around here. 
Um, we're va rapidly approaching the bit that I am not looking forward to. I probably will look forward to it once I've done it. And that's the head. I'm pointing at stuff that you can't see. Thank you very much, Lost. I quite liked it as well. Sometimes <coughs> it just... I didn't know how that was going to turn out, to be honest, at all. And uh, it's just sort of turned out to be... Well, <coughs> it's probably a bit sort of too many lines, really, to be, you know, really like a mountain, but because that probably would have smoothed off a little bit. I, I could go in with a round gouge and smooth them, but to be honest, I quite like it, so I'll leave it as it is. And we may come back to it afterwards and uh, and decide it will look better with some, you know, smoothed off a little bit. But we'll uh, we'll look at that in in light of the whole piece once we get close to the edge, <coughs> close to the edge, close to the end. I've just got various cutting marks around here, so I'm just shave those off. Yeah. I was about to say the transition into the tail layer is a bit too sharp but um, we've not done much work on the tail anyway so that will uh, that'll be looked at again just a bit of a bump there which mm, I mean it's, it's the hips so you kind of might expect it but I don't like the feel of it so I kind of when I rub my finger down there I'm kind of expecting it to be a nice smooth transition um, without a bump so whilst the bump may be anatomically correct it ain't getting one still there Well, it'll do for now until we've done a bit more work on the tail. It 
It's other game there, right? We end the week, two thousand and one. Good evening, welcome to the studio. I'm sorry, I uh, uh, missed you uh, joining. I don't think so. Uh, lost. I think. Um, I, th I think I'm going to bow them downwards a little bit. Rather than th they're flat at the moment, basically. I think we'll pull them down a little bit. Uh, but the, the skin is kind of like a leathery skin. I mean, th there should be some sort of skin texture on there, but it, you know, that's the sort of thing it's almost impossible to carve. Uh, sort of the detail of skin texture. Um, I'd have to use, I don't know, some sort of roughing tool um, to give it a distressed sort of look. <coughs> Sort of thing, uh, if it was furniture, you'd be hitting it with something like a, a big metal chain to give it a distress look with little dings and things like that in it. But I couldn't couldn't really do do that at all um, here. And trying to do anything, you know, with a with a chisel would be uh, really quite difficult. So I think I think what I might do is just bow it slightly. Um, so that you know, it's a bit like an umbrella when you put an umbrella up between the ribs it always seems to curve slightly um, and the reference picture I'm looking at kind of gives the same sort of impression so I think I might I might do a little bit of that but otherwise leave it smooth it's kind of like a leathery skin perhaps or a velvety skin um, so quite smooth I think um, and we'll we'll leave it at that in terms of texture can only go so far. Yeah, I've got a ridge there. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Right, uh, so, and I've got some more of the tail to do. I'm going to move up and remove some of this material around the the two hands, uh, two palms here, between the palm and the head, and here between the thumb and the fingers. This was just waste wood I left in place just to protect these protuberances uh, in the short term. You've been camping with no Wi-Fi. So no 3G signal either then, I guess. <laughs> right. Uh, hmm. Let me move you a little bit. Hopefully you'll get still be able to see some of what I'm doing then because otherwise my hands are going to get in the way but a uh, bit of a different angle for you there Getting my hands in the way, aren't I? But uh, I shall try my best to avoid it as much as possible. I'm sort of cutting straight down, but I'm not too bothered if I undercut slightly. That's ultimately what I'm going to do anyway, is undercut this, these edges. So if I do it uh, do it by accident now, it's not a, a particularly uh, an issue at all.
Uh, it's really just a case of uh, shaving away at this uh, this waste wood until the area I want to be gone is no longer here. When I get to doing around the thumb again, um, I will have to be a little bit careful as I go on the inside here that I don't actually bust it off. I'd like to keep it if I can. As before, I'm not pulling these bits off, I'm cutting them. That way I don't rip into the wood. Can I, can you make a picture? Can you make a picture of what, Rianne Wait. Are you asking, can you take a screenshot of this or something like that? <laughs> Are you asking if you can post a picture? You'll be a little bit careful when I lose con control if you like and you heard that thump as it hit the board the blade is digging into this base bit and that means that um, if I don't want that mark to be visible I will have to you know, shave the background down below the the level of that mark I just made so I do have to be try and be careful as much as possible not to do that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you to your friend, uh, Rihanna Dewey. Uh, this is getting uh, a little bit more awkward to try and... Uh, shave downwards so I'm going to resort to chipping out uh, small sections at least up here at the top because that that thump as it goes down into that base board will eventually create too deep a hole for me to be able to shave away so You move the camera a bit more now because you can't see. again you won't be able to see what I'm doing with my uh, with my big hand in the way I'm gonna focus okay let's move that that's the shadow from the camera so I'll just move the light a little bit Yep, yeah, I can see what I'm doing. Move those chisels out of the way.
Right, that's almost down to that backboard level. Tidy it up again afterwards, it's not uh, <clears throat> something I have to do now. Get a bit closer to the thumb now. Gonna start and live dangerously. It will be a little disappointing if I lose it at this stage, having managed to preserve it for most of the uh, most of the carving. But if I do, I do. Okay, that's the that's nice of him, uh, Rihanna Dewitt. Has he got so many experience of carving? Is he an expert carver, or is he just interested in what's going on? I'm extremely wary of putting too much pressure, pressure on this. I know just how fragile this wood is. Right. This is the uh, this is the danger time. And this is the one I'm probably going to take really carefully. Okay, I see. So we'll go down there, and then we'll shave that down. It looks like a fairly substantial piece of wood, but <clears throat> it's um, it's quite amazing how easily it, it would be to crack that off. Even over that thickness.
DJ Woods Gaming, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. <clears throat> nice to see you. <clears throat> As you can see, <clears throat> we're ca uh, carving in relief a dragon. And since I'm doing it with wood, there's no fire breathing going to be allowed by the dragon. I don't want to set it on fire. Although these particular dragons are fire breathing dragons. Thank you very much, DJ Woods Gaming. That's uh, kind of you to say, sir. I just saw that piece of wood move. Not the sort of thing I actually want to see. I think it was just flexing slightly. I don't think it's actually broken off anywhere, but. Let's see if I can get in there a bit better with a V gouge. To clean the material away. all gone just a little bit now at the bottom which is pretty, pretty, proving to be a little bit uh, reluctant to carve away tip of the chisels jammed up a bit right okay so we move that waste material there um, got a little bit of cleaning up to do around this side of the wing. Just for the moment, I'm just making it vertical, as I mentioned, or have mentioned before. I'll almost certainly undercut these wings. Which means cut at an angle in underneath them, just to give them a bit of a shadow line or detail up edge, so that it looks like they're standing away from the material. Even though they actually, in practice, won't be.
Just I shut up for a moment there, just to let you uh, hear the the slicing of the wood from the chisel. We'll come back to the baseboard around there. I've got a few cuts that I ideally didn't want to have, but that was part of the reason for leaving most of the baseboard very slightly a millimetre or two high uh, when I made the uh, initial uh, background cut because of uh, things like that happening. Now then, we've got to remove this one. Being careful not to knock that anymore, as that now is vulnerable. So, can we put you in a position that will make it a bit easier for you to see what I'm doing? Um, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. There we go. In fact, we'll put a light on here in the studio as well, in addition to this one over the workspace. Okay. So the intention now is to remove just around to here basically all the, and all the way down to the baseboard same sort of idea as we did on this side mm, some waste there again be careful not to knock off this tip here um, I think basically we're going to have to do this in sections grain in this area is tilting down like that as I'm putting the chisel in it's trying to drive it further down it's not allowing me to cut across the grain so I'm gonna to have to be careful because that's that's tending to force the wood above it up like a lever which is how it will cause it to separate and uh, and break away Ideally, I should care from this angle, but I can't because of the uh, the hand itself is in the way. What I'm doing is carving downwards a little bit. Um, that helps uh, in that if I'm close to the angle at which the grain is going, then I'm less likely to force to force lift the wood and uh, and have it break off.
Okay, let's do some of this at this end. One of the things when you're in this sort of funny grain sort of position where you really have to do something you don't you know really want to do if you can take thin slices then you're less likely to crack off the wood because the thin slices bend they won't they won't lift as such they won't act like a lever or a wedge they'll just they'll just bend and that helps to protect what you're doing it just means it takes somewhat uh, longer though to to cut down if you're having to do it in thin slices. If you're doing it with a harder wood, um, if you're doing it with mahogany, I could probably take a chisel to this without a sorry, a, a mallet to this without any problem. But this stuff is a little bit uh, too fragile. It's about two thirds of the way down. This is um, slightly less than a 90 degree corner and because of that I can't quite get the chisel right into the corner and all the wood shavings are, uh, are sticking in that corner. Okay, need to do a bit more down here now. <laughs> I kind of know what you mean, Lost in House, but it's actually not that bad at the moment. I am, uh, you know, because I'm taking that much care, but I, I do know what you mean. And sometimes I do get that myself. There is sometimes an element of uh, when you when you're uh, driving a chisel slightly of. Um, uh, yeah, the uh, the odd um, promise made to the, the god of your choice. <laughs> I'm 
On the lines of please don't let it break, please don't let it break. <laughs> Because the irony kind of is that you do have to get close to the edge, you know, to that to, to that side because of uh, uh, you want it, you know, to be carved carved up to that edge. So, but so you have to go into the danger zone. It's almost safe for the moment, we're almost down to the bottom. Uh, I could say it's unlikely that we're going to break it now, but then you just know Murphy's going to be around, or, or his uh, cousin Sod, and uh, if they are, you know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> Um, so whilst I'm just finishing this little bit off, what I'll do is just tell you a little bit about these uh, these particular dragons for anybody who hasn't uh, heard the story. This um, this dragon is based fairly loosely off the image that you see as a reference at the bottom left of the screen. That um, that painting uh, was uh, done by a gentleman or an illustrator an artist called Michael Whelan and uh, it was done to illustrate the cover of uh, a book in the series uh, of books written by an author called Anne McCaffrey. Now, Anne McCaffrey was uh, a science fiction writer and created a whole series of books and uh, I think I don't know, there's, I think there's 20 or 30 of them I'm not quite sure how many there's, there's a, quite a lot anyway uh, about a world populated by humans that have gone there in sleeper ships I think it was um, where the uh, the dragons work almost in symbiosis with uh, with humans to combat a menace on the planet and uh, Michael Wheeland was the <coughs> favorite illustrator for of Anne McCaffrey because as she described the dragons to him and as he read the books he was able to do uh, an image which was exactly the sort of the image that Anne McCaffrey had in her mind about dragons there's no scales on them for example you know they're, they're not they don't have sharp spines all over the backs or anything like that 
Uh, and whilst they're fearsome beasts, relatively speaking, because they are, you know, they're, they're big, they're powerful, they can breathe fire, they're also a friendly beast. And uh, you know, the, the illustrations reflected that. And uh, he was, uh, I say, he was a favourite author for Anne McCaffrey's, uh, Anne McCaffrey's books. I happen to like the portrayal that he has of her dragons, and I kind of agree that the uh, the portrayal matches what I see in my mind when I, uh, you know, read the descriptions of the dragons. And uh, I just got to like the this particular image. I decided I'd like to do something like it in in carving, and so that's that's where this particular one came about. Now from, from the illustration you can see it's a white dragon and that actually uh, tells us in the whole of the Anne McCaffrey books which dragon it is because there is only one single dragon that's white uh, and that dragon is the, obviously this one uh, it's, the dragon is called Ruth uh, which to avoid confusion is a male dragon in this particular case and he has some quite, potentially because he's white or for whatever other reason, he's got some specific uh, capabilities that um, most of the other dragons don't have the same level of skill in, shall we say. But he's, uh, he is one of the heroes of the Anne McCaffrey uh, Pern series of books. And... There we go. And that area is cleaned out. So everything is virtually everything is now standing free. And the next section to be carved is this head. <laughs> It's looking at me, and uh, I'm looking back at it, and uh, we're going to we're going to see out see who turns out to be the boss in the end, and whether the uh, that that head wins or I win. We shall see, uh, but it, fortunately, it won't be tonight that we see. It's now ten o'clock, and. Uh, what with this afternoon's stream and other things going on and the fact it's really warm here in the studio I'm a little bit tired now and I don't really want to be carving whilst I'm feeling tired it only takes a, a slight slip up on places like that <laughs> when you're feeling tired and you wish you hadn't done it in the first place I've learned that a long time ago so I'm not going to take that chance uh, what I'm going to do is uh, spend some time before going to bed because it is 10 p.m. now in the UK relaxing and uh, cooling down and one or two other things that need doing before I work tomorrow morning but uh, so I'm going to say thank you everybody for watching it has been uh, great having you around it's uh, it's been a little bit of a quiet Sorry, I just saw something on the ring that I'm wearing uh, that attracted my attention. It has been somewhat of a quiet weekend, so it has been great to have uh, you you guys around to uh, to chat to. And I look forward to seeing you on another stream in the future. Of course, if there's anybody watching that isn't following me, I would, of course, encourage you to follow me. Why wouldn't I? The usual advert, of course. Please follow, please follow, please follow. It'd be good if I could sort of hypnotise you down the microphone, wouldn't it? I tell you what, since I'm signing off and the camera's the right way up and my hair's a mess. Um, oh, I'll turn the camera upside down as well. That way, that way I'm not doing pretending to be a bat. Uh, I thought I'd turn that the other way up uh, before I finished uh, what I was doing earlier, but there you go. I'll turn it that way. I'll even zoom out. Then it looks uh, it doesn't look quite so bad. There we go. So you can see me. That's something unusual, isn't it? 
and I am wondering if the yeah it looks like the voice is just about in sync so that'll do <laughs> um, so I'm going to encourage you to follow me if you're not following me um, why wouldn't you yeah I can think lots of reasons why so don't answer that um, but uh, of course if you uh, if you just want to know when I'm going to stream and you don't really feel like following me then you can follow me on Twitter if you like the details are on the end panel when it comes up but they're also down below the stream window at Zoragon Art. Uh, about the only thing I tweet is the fact that I go live so um, you won't get to know what I'm having for my sandwiches or anything like that so don't, you don't need to worry about that. On the other hand if you just want to try and catch me next on a stream my next stream should be tomorrow night barring any emergencies that come up of course uh, at about uh, around about 8 p.m. 20 hundred hours uh, British summer time that's the UK of course uh, on the other hand if you want to try and catch me um, at uh, that time 1900 hours GMT and if you're feeling particularly lazy and you don't know the difference between GMT and your own time zone you take a look at your clock now if you have a look if it's on your computer and it's Windows it's down at the bottom right of course uh, subtract two hours from that and uh, that's would be 8 p.m. in the UK and that's roughly the time I will be broadcasting tomorrow night and most nights as well in the meantime I'll just uh, show you the no, I've just cleaned it out uh, the stuff of it there's the uh, the dragon that looked better than my face did but uh, the undercutting by the way should enable you to see some of the shadows like that without needing a, a light in, in the way and so it'll make it look like the wings are stood off a lot more but that's the dragon anyway I'm in the UK it's 10 o'clock at night I'm going to wish you all a, a very good night and I'll hope to see you on another stream bye bye everybody